Ladies and gentlemen, the academic procession will enter shortly. You are kindly requested to stand. Bom mali botate, mulukuluko di ruteri utlatena kana ko ye kopana, lukupelwa ko ye ema. Dames en jere, de akademische processie sal binnenkort inbeweeg. U wordt versoek om asjeblief op te staan. By the power vested in me, I hereby constitute this assembly as a legal congregation of the University of Pretoria. During this assembly, degrees with all the associated rights and privileges will be conferred to the candidates whose names appear in the program. Please take your seats. Ladies and gentlemen, we request you to join us in silent prayer or meditation to give thanks for the achievements of our graduates. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, as Vice Chancellor and Principal of the University of Pretoria, I extend a hearty word of welcome to you at this graduation ceremony. I would like to welcome some people by title, position, category, and name. Recipient of the Honorary Doctorate, Professor Richard Mkandawire, Dean of the Faculty of Natural and Agricultural Sciences, Professor Baron Erasmus, Acting Deputy Director, Enrollment and Student Administration, Ms. J. Peterson. Chairpersons of schools, heads of department, directors, emeriti, and honorary professors, and other lecturers and their spouses or partners. Representative of the Student Representative Council who will present the SRC, Academic Honorary Colors. All persons to whom degrees will be conferred to this morning. All spouses or partners, parents and other partners, as well as dignitaries whom we may not be aware of. I now request the Dean to introduce to me the candidate for the honorary doctorate.
Mr. Vice-Chancellor and Principal, I have the honor to introduce to you Professor Richard Mlomboji Mkandawire for the conferment of the degree Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. Professor Richard Mkandawire is a socio-economist and a rural development expert. He is also the African Director of the Alliance for African Partnership and the Malawi Planning Commission Chairperson. Before joining the, African, the Alliance for African Partnership, he worked as Vice President of the African Fertilizer and Agribusiness Partnership, where he led a team of experts in driving innovative interventions for effective and efficient delivery of fertilizers among smallholder farmers in Africa. He currently co-chairs the policy team supporting the Africa Union 2023 Summit on Fertilizer and Soil Health, and he is an adjunct professor at the Lilongwe University of Agriculture and Natural Resources. Before, before joining AFAP, Professor Mkandawire was senior advisor to the New Partnership for Africa's Development, NEPAD, where he was the principal architect in the design of NEPAD's Comprehensive Africa Agriculture Development Program, known as the CAADP, and a catalyzer for its acceptance by African heads of state and donor agencies. During the critical initial decade of this program, he was viewed as a country-led development champion, influencing how bilateral and multilateral donors assist African agriculture and other sectors. Professor Mkandarwire's academic career includes teaching and research at the Lilongwe University of Agriculture and Natural Resources, where he was at the helm of leadership in establishing the Center for Agriculture Research and Development. After his stint at the Lilongwe University of Agriculture and Natural Resources, Professor Mkandawire worked for six years with the Commonwealth Secretariat as the Africa Regional Director for Youth Programs. He was instrumental in establishing national youth development initiatives across Africa. He subsequently served as the founding director of the Center for Youth Studies at the University of Venda in South Africa. Professor Mkandawire's development initiatives have been recognized across the continent and globally. In 2008, he received an honorary doctorate from the University of KwaZulu-Natal for his work spearheading the CAADP agenda. In 2008, he was an awardee of Drivers of Change for his leadership in driving CAADP acceptance by African heads of state, government, and development partners. In 2012, the University of Pretoria appointed him as an extraordinary professor. Professor Mkandawire has, over the years, published extensively on agriculture development policy and related areas. Mr. Vice-Chancellor and Principal, I request you to confer the honorary doctorate on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Science Honoris Causa with all its rights and privileges on Dr. Richard Njomboli Mkandawire. Congratulations. I have the honor of requesting Professor Richard Mlombon Jim Kandawire to address the assembly. The Vice Chancellor and Principal of the University of Pretoria, uh, faculty, management, and staff of the university graduating students, families witnessing this esteemed function, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. 
I am honored and humbled to stand before this esteemed gathering of academic luminaries and continuing and graduating uh, students. It is with immense gratitude that I accept the conferment of an honorary doctorate from the University of Pretoria. I do not only personally accept this award, but also on behalf of institutions and universities that I have been associated with uh, in Africa, including the University of uh, Pretoria. I would like to express my appreciation to many of the colleagues I've worked with over the years, and I'm delighted that uh, they made a contribution also to the many achievements that have been cited by the dean. While looking back at my own personal journey, I found reason to reflect on the role of universities and institutions of research in African economic development. This is the subject of my brief address on this occasion today. Africa's run to catch up with the tigers of the global south and the role of universities. I would like to preamble my address by taking a cue from the late Tandika Mkandawiri. I think most of the colleagues know him as uh, one of the eminent thought leaders uh, in Africa, but also I'd like to take a cue from uh, the late Malim Julius Nyerere, the former president of Tanzania. These two great thought leaders spoke on uh, separate occasions about the urgency for Africa to run while others are walking. It is a well-known fact that uh, if we look at the indicators of well-being, Africa lags behind the other countries uh, across the globe. Tandika, when he actually refers to this question of running when others are walking, makes a powerful case that running to catch up with the rest of the globe would demand radical thinking on the role of institutions of higher learning and research in Africa. This speaks to the urgency of placing universities and other centers of learning and research at the center of Africa's development efforts. The approach to research and teaching also needs to be radical to generate the required knowledge for the run. It is universities and their research institutes that are brokers of knowledge and technological breakthroughs. It is universities that should be the leaders in generating disruptive thinking and technologies as well. It is universities that should shape the Africa we want. It is universities that should take us on the road that was taken by the Asian Tigers, which includes quite a number of countries, including uh, Hong Kong, South Korea, and others. These Asian country, uh, Tigers are high growth economies driven by exports and rapid industrialization. The, the Asian Tigers have consistently maintained high levels of economic growth since the 1960s and have collectively joined the ranks of world's wealthiest nations. There are several African countries that are running to catch up with the Tigers. This is very well captured in the notion of um, rising Africa, which speaks to African nations that are running and in many ways at paces away ahead of many of the other nations globally. To assert that Africa is running to catch up with the tigers does not imply that uh, Africa, particularly Sub-Saharan Africa, is a free-for-all region of opportunities. No, not at all. Sub-Saharan African countries remain the home of global hunger. However, the solace is that uh, we have most indicators uh, of well-being which point towards uh, a region that is running in the right direction. 
South Africa, South African institutions especially, of higher learning and research could play an increased role in running towards uh, stimulating high levels of economic growth, including foster, fostering higher agriculture productivity through support of research development and extension and rural infrastructure. This, however, is not doable in the absence of intentional efforts by both governments and the private sector in collectively and intentionally investing in research and development systems and reaching out beyond South African borders. The University of Pretoria is playing its part. I applaud the University of Pretoria for leading through its generating uh, groundbreaking academic training in agriculture sciences and the leadership of the departments and centers of excellence, uh, a number of uh, those which are represented in this uh, August assembly. Uh, the current reach by the University of Pretoria that attracts students and scholars from across the continent must be applauded. Financing the University of Pretoria, for instance, to, to train more African scholars from across sub-Saharan African countries in agriculture sciences is good business for South Africa. Indeed, what South Africa needs is not more hungry and poor people across its borders, but food insecure people with higher incomes to create demand for South African products and services. University of Pretoria should therefore be seen as a generator of our public goods for South Africa. Investing in the university such as this one makes economic sense as well as a political sense for South Africa. It is institutions such as the University of Pretoria that will remain key to enabling South Africa to run and catch up with the global South and to advance the African rising narrative. Allow me, Mr. Vice Chancellor, to speak on a personal note. My personal career has been one of multiple dreams. In my undergraduate days, as a, a young overzealous uh, lecturer, I dreamed of pursuing a, a career as a community animator, uh, working in the rural communities, particularly in the field of agriculture and health. I saw, you know, in my earlier days, visibly um, emaciated uh, folks in rural areas and as an eyesore, I could not understand why my government sidelined such communities. Hundreds of children across my country, Malawi, I saw going to bed hungry, thousands of children um, suffering from malaria attacks and hundreds more walking into community clinics that are, had empty shelves with the exception of a handful of uh, uh, tablets, such as uh, aspirin or Panadol, I could not understand why those living in the opulence behind high brick fence walls could not see the unfolding obscene tragedy of poverty for the countryside. I vowed my career pathway would be to change the status quo. My career uh, took a turn when I joined the Faculty of Agriculture and um, I realized that, uh, you know, most of African countries, uh, my own included, had been reconditioned to look to the Global North partners to think development, to charting national development pathways parachuted into the country from metro the metropolis of the Global North with scant understanding of the local realities on the ground. African countries for many years have been reconditioned not to run development thinking. They've been reconditioned to allow market forces to run development thinking, while the state took a back seat. In the process, 
they were reconditioned to remain passive recipients of external development and technical assistance. For decades, African smallholder farmer communities were conditioned to receive handouts in the form of uh, subsidies and other inducements. Even more troubling in the recent past has been the realization that powerful range seekers operating within the state apparatus with deep pockets have rendered institutions of the state impotent to deliver on promises of inclusive wealth creation. After close to over two decades of independence, it is clear that Africa can do better and has the capacity to run in defining its own development pathways to challenge the status quo of recent uh, rent seekers that have become an albatross in the African race for transformation. Granted, we have exceptional countries that have moved away from the thinking of the past and are making headway in charting their own indigenous development pathways and taking head on rent seekers and building accountable government and governance structures that are responsive to advancing inclusive wealth creation for their peoples. These include countries such as Ethiopia, Rwanda, Tanzania, Cote d'Ivoire, that have consistently grown by the pursuing development interventions that challenge imported models and powerful national vested interests. Allow me, Mr. Vice-Chancellor, to convey a personal message to graduating students that are gathered here today. Therefore, in conclusion, Mr. Vice-Chancellor, I would like to congratulate the new graduates of the University of Pretoria and their families for the fruits they're about to reap today. I would like also to remind that uh, those receiving their degrees today is only the beginning of a long journey uh, to learning. Your efforts work tirelessly for Africa's development are an ongoing challenge. Everyone is crying about uh, the massive growth of youth unemployment across Africa, including graduates who, upon walking out of the corridors of the university, find themselves jobless. But as graduates, remember, you're walking into an African world of abundant possibilities. Deep thinkers will always find a job. Some jobs are created for you by others, and you will also need to create jobs for other individuals. Poverty and hunger, destitution should not continue to remain the hallmark of Africa. We cannot and should not allow this to happen. We cannot and should not allow the continent of Africa to remain an island of poverty in a sea of global prosperity. It is incumbent upon all of us, graduating students, the academia, politicians, and the private sector to realize that we don't have the luxury of time. We have no choice as Africans but to run to catch up with the rest of the world. In, conclude, in conclusion, Mr. Vice Chancellor, allow me to pay homage to you for your outstanding leadership in rendering the University of uh, Pretoria as a premier institution in Africa. Your leadership in transforming and unifying an amalgam of institutions from an array of academic cultures and holding the university together is remarkable. It is a feat of uh, true leadership. It augurs well with the future of this prestigious institution. Indeed, it augurs well with this institution as a premier center of academic excellence and research for Africa. Mr. Vice Chancellor, and all colleagues gathered here. I would like to thank you for this honor, which I dedicate to African smallholder farmers. I thank you.
Thank you, Professor Richard Mukanda Awiri, for your knowledge and insight, passion and commitment to African smallholder community, and for better agriculture for a better Africa. Thank you. I now request the Dean to introduce to me the candidates whose names appear in the program. Mr. Vice-Chancellor and Principal, the Supervisors will now introduce the doctoral candidates. Mr. Vice-Chancellor and Principal, I introduce to you Wisdom Salom Abemavur who has complied with the requirements for the degree Philosopher Doctor with a thesis titled Lactic Acid Bacteria from Traditionally Fermented African Food Affect the Diarogenic Potential of Intra-Aggregative E. coli Prepared Under My Supervision. In this thesis, the candidate studied the feasibility of using probiotic bacteria Lactobacillus fermentum and Pediococcus pentasasius isolated from traditionally fermented West African food for the prevention and treatment of gastrointestinal infections caused by diarogenic intra-aggregative E. coli from fresh milk. The candidate demonstrated that these strains competitively excluded displaced and inhibited the DEAEC strains from adhering to intestinal epithelial cells. The candidate also showed that the LAB strains prevented and restored alterations in the intestinal epithelial. The candidate concluded that these LAB from fermented food can prevent gastroenteritis and improve the host's gut's health. Mr. Vice-Chancellor and Principal, I request you to confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all its associated rights and privileges on the candidate. Congratulations. Mr. Vice-Chancellor and Principal, I introduce to you Felipe Alejandro Balocchi, who has complied with the requirements for the degree Philosophy a Doctor with a thesis entitled Oricaria Canker Disease in Chile, Etiology and Fungal Diversity. Prepared under my supervision and with Professor Michael Wingfield and Dr. Rodrigo Ahamada as co-supervisors. In his thesis, the candidate investigated a recently emerged disease on the iconic Araucaria trees of Chile and Argentina through extensive sampling, monitoring of symptoms, fungal isolations, and pathogenicity test. The candidate demonstrated that the disease was caused by a fungus unknown to science. This fungus was subsequently described as a new species and placed in a novel genus which he named Perinomyces cutramphi. Further studies revealed the presence of several additional species of Perinomyces and two rare species of fungi feeding on the resin of these trees. This resulted in the candidate describing an additional five novel species. This thesis highlights the scarcity of knowledge regarding the natural biodiversity, including plant pathogens, harbored by these iconic tree species and their close relatives in the Araucariaceae. This foundational study is crucial in a scenario where forest diseases are an increasing threat to natural biodiversity. Mr. Vice-Chancellor and Principal, I request you to confer the degree on the candidates. 
I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all its associated rights and privilege on the candidate. Congratulations. Mr. Vice-Chancellor and Principal, I introduce to you Mrs. Shannon Brunt, who has complied with the requirements for the degree Philosophiae Doctor with a thesis titled Under the Trapdoor, Resolving the Taxonomy and Phylogeography of the Trapdoor Spider Genus Stasimopus Megalomorphae Stasimopidae of the Karoo, prepared under my supervision and with Ms. 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 Robin Lyle from the ARC as a co-supervisor. In her thesis, the candidate examined new ways in which to address the issue of species identification in an endemic trapdoor spider genus in the Karoo by applying genetic species delimitation techniques and geometric morphometric analyses on their eye patterns. Through this, eye patterns were found to be a good character for species identification, and the evolutionary changes to the character were further explored. The promovenda created the first integrative taxonomy for Stasimopus. Using these results, along with species morphology and genetic sequencing, to describe nine new species in the region. Documenting Karoo biodiversity is of vital importance. In light of the impending change in the region due to economic incentives and climate change. Lastly, a phylogeographic analysis was performed, finding that aridification was vital for the diversification of this genus. This thesis is the first cohesive body of work on the genus, and in fact on any ground-dwelling spider genus in South Africa. And the methods employed can be used on the rest of South Africa's understudied spider fauna. Mr. Vice-Chancellor and Principal, I request you to confer the degree on, degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all its associated rights and privileges on the candidate, congratulations. Mr. Vice-Chancellor and Principal, I introduce to you Samantha Lee, Jameson Daniels, who has complied with the requirements of the, for the degree Philosophy Doctor with a thesis titled Vegetation in an Age of Global Change, Encroachment, Phenology and Succession, prepared under my supervision and with Daniel Kissling as co-supervisor. In this thesis, the candidate explored patterns and drivers of vegetation, phenology and succession in an age of global change. Using a macroecological approach, the timing and climatic drivers of fruiting phenology of widespread, widespread South African fleshy and dry-fruited species were compared, and the differences linked to the respective physiological requirements of the two groups. Field surveys were conducted to demonstrate deterministic patterns of succession and the associated microclimatic drivers thereof through bush clump formation, a form of woody encroachment, in a South African savanna. A systematic review illustrated that consistent changes occur in several plant functional traits along successional gradients, but that these findings should be interpreted with caution due to several inherent biases in trait-based successional studies. This work contributes to our understanding of how ecosystems and associated species will respond to global change drivers. Mr. Vice Chancellor and Principal, I request you to confer the degree to the, can to the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all its associated rights and privileges on the candidate. Congratulations. <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. Vice Chancellor and Principal, I introduce to you Calvin, who has compiled with the requirements for uh, the degree in philosophy doctorate with a thesis entitled Sociality in African Morets, exploring how rainfall affects dispersal and genetic exchange in the Natal Morets, Christmas Hottentotus Netherlands. It's prepared under the supervision of Prof. Nigel Bennett and, mas and with myself and Dr. Marcus Zuto as co supervisors. In this thesis, Carl put together a fantastic multi uh, disciplinary study to affect, to study the various growth rates, daily activity patterns, genetic exchange, dispersal, and group sizes of this mesic dwelling social mole rat species. Compared to the current literature, he found that these mesic studied uh, um, species of mole rats are, uh, form far smaller group sizes compared to their larger arid dwelling uh, cousins. Body conditions was influenced by group size and seasons. Males grew faster than females, but growth rate was unaffected by group size. Uh, for the first time, daily activity patterns in a copter breeding species was found to be equal among all individuals in a group, including the dominant uh, males and females. And these uh, activity patterns were shaped by the extreme burrow temperatures they su uh, survive in. The group relations, however, were similar to other African morat species. The dispersal of males, ma dispersal was biased towards males with females being more related to, to neighboring colonies. Individuals may even disperse up to 400 meters, regardless of rivers or roads. The study finds that the adaptions of Natal Moritz are, uh, are evolved to co cope with extreme seasonal fluctuations, and however, they may be under dire threat under climate change. Mr. Vice Chancellor, I request you to confer the degree of the, to the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all its associated rights and privileges on the candidate. Congratulations. Mr. Vice Chancellor and Principal, I introduce to you Mark Trevor Freeman, who has complied with the requirements for the degree Philosophy Doctor with a thesis titled Avian Adaptive Thermoregulation Correlated with Temperature and Humidity Prepared Under My Supervision. In this thesis, the candidate examined the evolution of body temperature and heat tolerance in birds, information vital for predicting the impacts of rapid anthropogenic climate change on avian biodiversity. By collecting data at multiple sites along an aridity gradient, the candidate was able to explore how environmental temperature and humidity interact to drive physiological variation. The research revealed important and novel new patterns of adaptation to climate and bring into question paradigms that have guided the field of avian comparative physiology for the last 70 years. One chapter of the thesis has already been published in the High Impact International Journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. And to quote one of the global leaders in the field who examined the thesis, congratulations on a wonderful body of work. Mr. Vice Chancellor and Principal, I request you to confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all its associated rights and privileges on the candidate. Congratulations. Mr. Vice Chancellor and Principal, I introduce to you Felix Jao Manuel King, who has complied with the requirements for the degree Philosophe Doctor with a thesis titled Phenotypic and Whole Genome Single Nucleotide Polymorphism Characterization of Mozambican Indigenous Cattle Breeds, prepared under my supervision and with Professor Banga as co supervisor. In this thesis, the candidate investigated the variation of three Mozambican breeds and their genetic relationships with cattle populations in the region. Significant morphological differentiation was observed between the populations and a combination of type traits were identified for indivi individual assignment using discriminant function analysis. SNP analyses indicated moderate levels of genetic variation 
with limited inbreeding and declining effective population sizes, low genetic differentiation was detected among South African and Mozambican indigenous populations, indicating both common ancestry and high gene flow rates. Selection signature analyses identified candidate genes associated with superior parasite resistance and fertility. This study highlights the need for animal recording and improvement programs and the implementation of conservation programs. The results of this study will assist in developing a joint regional strategy for the preservation and sustainable use of indigenous resources. Mr. Vice-Chancellor and Principal, I request you to confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all its associated rights and privileges on the candidate. Congratulations. Mr. Vice-Chancellor and Principal, I introduce you to Dina Alida Linde, who has complied with the requirements for the degree philosophy doctor with a thesis titled, The Effect of an Ionophore, Essential Oils and a Probiotic on the Rumen and Jejunal Microbiome of South African Bonds Mara Cattle Raised Under Feedlot Conditions, prepared under my supervision and with Dr. Dirkian Schocker and Dr. Linde de Toy as co-supervisors. In this thesis, the influence of feed additives on the rumen microbiome was studied. Due to the growing consumer awareness, there's a need for replacement of antibiotic growth promoters, which required the investigation of alternative feed additives. Bonsmara cattle were tested in an intensive growth trial with a supplementation of monensin, a probiotic, and essential oil. Amplicon sequencing analysis revealed no significant differences between monensin and the probiotic oils. The feed additives did influence the Georgina microbiome with a higher abundance of beneficial bacteria observed for the probiotic group. The results are promising for the use of probiotics and essential oils as viable alternatives to ionophores under feedlot conditions with positive benefits for sustainable beef production. Mr. Vice-Chancellor and Principal, I request you to confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all its associated rights and privileges on the candidate. Congratulations. Mr. Vice-Chancellor and Principal, I introduce to you Baratang Ellison Lubisi, who has complied with the requirements for the degree Philosophia Doctor with the thesis titled Susceptibility of Sewards to Rift Valley Fever Virus, Implications for Animal and Human Health in Africa, prepared under my supervision and with Prof. Mary Louise Penrith as co-supervisor. In this thesis, the candidates sought to understand how infection with Rift Valley fever virus, a zoonotic disease agent primarily of domestic ruminants, affects the physiology of domestic pigs. By infecting and monitoring pigs of different ages and analyzing clinical and pathological data, the thesis significantly advances our understanding of how domestic pigs respond to Rift Valley fever virus infection. The study demonstrates that similar to ruminants, pregnant sows can abort as a result of infection with the virus, but unlike young ruminants, sows um, that normally die from infection, piglets are subclinically infected and can shed virus in the excretions for up to one month. These results, together with the development of novel diagnostic approaches and retrospective sero surveys, shed light on the role of domestic pigs and warthogs, Pecocurus africanus, in Rift Valley fever epidemiology, and provide a framework for biomedical research that focuses on vaccine development. 
Mr. Vice Chancellor and Principal, I request you to confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy with all its associated rights and privileges on the candidate. Congratulations. Mr. Vice-Chancellor and Principal, I introduce to you Tabo Patrick Magandana, who has complied with the requirements for the degree Philosophia Doctor with a thesis titled Change in Species Composition, Herbaceous Biomass Yield, Soil Seed Bank, and Soil Properties of Semi-Arid Grassland, subject to different levels of rainfall interception and resting resting period prepared under my supervision and with Professor Iob Tesfamariam as a co-supervisor. In this thesis, the candidate studied the effect of rainfall interception and resting period on vegetation and soil properties. Most palatable species will disappear as a result of rainfall reduction due to climate change. By using different rainfall interception levels and resting period, it was observed that different species react differently to rainfall reduction and resting period. This has given an idea of grass species that can be used to recede the, the rangeland during and after period of reduced rainfall imposed by climate change. With this study, farmers can make informed decisions about which grass they can invest on, especially under dry land. The study showed that Iragrostis corvula will be able to survive under, hard con under harsh conditions imposed by the climate change. The candidate was able to demonstrate that longer resting period will improve above ground biomass production and that rainfall reduction reduced soil water content, whereas it increased soil nutrient content. Mr. Vice-Chancellor and Principal, I request you to confer the degree on the candidates. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all its associated rights and privileges on the candidate. Congratulations. Mr. Vice Chancellor and Principal, I introduce to you Lerato Maimela, who has complied with the requirements for the degree of uh, Doctor of Philosophy with a thesis titled Conservation Implications of Rainbow Trout Invasions in the Upper Blight River System in South Africa, prepared under the supervision of uh, Dr. Tsungai Zangea and my co supervision. In her thesis, the candidate evaluated the impacts of alien predatory fish on indigenous fish by integrating the concept of uh, invasion debt, distribution surveys, food web and risk analysis with optimal modeling. The thesis represents a significant advance in our understanding of the impacts of introduced alien predatory fish on indigenous fish in biodiversity sensitive areas such as mountain streams. The candidate demonstrated that there is a substantial invasion debt for rainbow trout in Pumalanga province uh, because most areas that are predicted to be climatically suitable are not yet invaded. It also demonstrated that a rainbow trout invasion can lead to a decline and fragmentation of indigenous fish populations and changes in their feeding strategies. The approaches developed in this thesis demonstrate how the concept of invasion debt and risk analysis can be applied to provide an important link between invasion biology, management, and uh, policy. 
Mr. Vice Chancellor and Principal, I request you to confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy with his, all his associated rights and privileges on the candidate. Congratulations. Mr. Vice-Chancellor and Principal, I introduce to you Privilege Makunde, who has complied with the requirements for the degree Philosophy Doctor with a thesis titled Biology and Ecology of Eucalyptus Syrid Pests in South Africa, prepared under my supervision and with Professor Bernard Slippers as co-supervisor. In this thesis, the candidate reviewed the global diversity, distribution, biology, and impact of eucalyptus psyllids and investigated important aspects of the host preference, biological control, and seasonal occurrence of invasive eucalyptus psyllids in South Africa. The candidate also described the basic biology of the shell lobe psyllid, a recent introduction into South Africa. The candidate's work reveals the phytochemical characteristics of eucalyptus are the main factors that drive host preference of the psyllids, that some natural enemies of psyllids attack hosts within an ecological niche, whereas others are highly host-specific, and that seasonal abundance is influenced by the climatic region and psyllid species. The candidate findings have significantly contributed to developing integrated pest management programs in eucalyptus forest plantations. Mr. Vice-Chancellor and Principal, I request you to confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all its associated rights and privileges on the candidate. Congratulations. Mr. Vice Chancellor and Principal, I introduce to you Takalani Nelefule, who has complied with the requirements for the degree for philosophy doctor with the thesis titled, Defining, Determining, Reporting on the Potential Consequences of Moving Native Species Within South Africa in Terms of Biological Invasions. The thesis was prepared under my supervision and with uh, Dr. Caitlin Faulkner and Prof. John Wilson as co-supervisors. In his, in his thesis, the candidate investigated the phenomenon of, alien population, of native alien populations. In this study, the candidate proposed the term native alien populations to describe populations that result from human-mediated dispersal of individuals of a species beyond um, by a geographical barrier to a point beyond that species' native range that is within the same politically defined by geographic boundary as parts of the species' native range. The candidate developed a protocol for classifying populations as native, alien, cryptogenic, or native alien. The protocol was then used to gather data on native alien populations in South Africa. This study has made a major contribution to our understanding of the phenomenon of native alien populations and their management in uh, South Africa. Mr. Vice Chancellor and Principal, I request that you confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy with his, all its associated rights and privileges on the candidate. Congratulations. Mr. Vice Chancellor and Principal, I introduce to you Edwin Ocheng Ogola, who has complied with the requirements for the degree Philosophia Doctor with a thesis titled Arbovirus Vector Ecology and Diversity in Two Arid Pastoralist Dominated Counties in Kenya, Baringo and Kajiado, prepared under my supervision and with Dr. David Chuasi, Prof. Baldwin Torto, Prof. Sandra Junglin, and Prof. Rosemary Sang as co supervisors. 
In this thesis, the candidate genetically characterized arboviruses circulating in ticks, mosquitoes, sandflies, and culicoides biting midges, and assessed associated vector bionomics, such as species composition and vertebrate host interactions. By combining field ecology and laboratory analyses, such as cell culture and targeted next generation sequencing, this thesis provides a significant advance in our understanding of circulating arthropod-borne viruses among co-occurring vectors in disease endemic regions of Kenya. The candidate has demonstrated through the application of improved virus screening techniques, the presence of newly emerging human arboviral pathogens such as Jingmen tick virus, amongst others. Through the identification of vector blood feeding preference for humans and livestock, this thesis confirms a high exposure risk to arboviruses of public health and veterinary importance. It further highlights the significance of predictive arbovirus surveys in understanding arbovirus ecology that is crucial for epidemic preparedness and disease control. Mr. Vice Chancellor and Principal, I request you to confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all its associated rights and privileges on the candidate. Congratulations. Mr. Vice Chancellor and Principal, I introduce to you Ms. Anne Pondron, who has uh, compiled with the requirements of the degree of uh, philosophy doctor with the thesis titled Movement of African Savannah Elephants, Loxodana Africana in Relation to Their Environment. Prepared under my supervision and with Dr. Simon Chamiel James as the co-supervisor. In this thesis, the candidates explored the factors driving elephant movement decisions first within their home range, second along a well-established migration routes and third, into novel areas. Using satellite data, manipulative experiments, the thesis greatly expands our understanding of elephant decision-making pro um, processes with regards to landscape use. For example, the candidates has demonstrated that the discovery of long-term use of novel areas is dependent on the proximity of the elephants to the area and the area's overall quality. In addition, the candidate found that elephants cue off distance and not local rainfall events with initiating their seasonal migrations and that olfactory cues likely help them locate distant foraging areas, water sources, and rainfall events. Overall, these findings greatly expand our understanding of elephant landscape use and help explain how these mega herbivores locate key resources despite unpredictable conditions. As such, this thesis has direct management and conservation implications. Mr. Vice Chancellor and Principal, I request that you confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all its associated rights and privileges on the candidate, congratulations. Mr. Vice Chancellor and Principal, I introduce to you Lisa Retif, who has complied with the requirements for the degree de Philosophiae Doctor with a thesis titled Hemoplasma Prevalence, Diversity and Transmission Dynamics in Terrestrial Small Mammals from South Africa, prepared under my supervision and with Prof. Marinda Oersthuizen as co-supervisor. In this thesis, the candidate assessed the transmission dynamics of this emergent, potentially zoonotic group of bacteria in free living rodents sampled from urban, peri-urban, and natural environments. Using molecular methods, 14 hemoplasma genotypes were identified, 10 in indigenous and four in invasive rodent species. While rodent-associated hemoplasmas likely co-evolved with their hosts, phylogenetic results indicate that rare host switching events may have occurred. This study represents the first detection of rodent-associated hemoplasmas in the saliva of a free-living rodent and in fetal samples of positive dams. This, together with high hemoplasma occurrence in rodent-associated ectoparasites, is suggestive of multiple transmission routes. 
that th this thesis has provided baseline data for hemoplasmas cycling in synanthropic and indigenous rodent species within South Africa and expands on knowledge of rodent-associated hemoplasmas globally. Mr. Vice Chancellor and Principal, I request you to confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy with all its associated rights and privileges on the candidate. Congratulations. Mr. Vice Chancellor and Principal, I introduce to you Yandishwe Patient Sanarana, who has complied with the requirements for the degree Philosophy Doctor with a thesis titled Genome Wide Scan of Single Nucleotide Polymorphisms for Parentage Analysis in South African Indigenous Beef Breeds, prepared under my supervision and Professor Donna Berry and Dr. Mai Washi as co supervisors. In her thesis, the candidate investigated the recorded ancestry of the Bonsmara and Drakensberger cattle using commercial single nucleotide polymorphism arrays. Correct parentage is an essential step in the genetic evaluations for accurate selection and breeding value estimations. The candidate firstly evaluated the accuracy of the low density parentage panel of the International Society of Animal Genetics in these breeds and identified several limitations of this panel. Regions with hemizygous deletions that could affect parentage outcomes were identified and reported on 10 chromosomes. A low density SNP panel therefore was compiled and tested in these breeds for effective implementation in South African local Sanger breeds. Mr. Vice Chancellor and Principal, I request you to confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy with this all its associated rights and privileges on the candidate. Congratulations. Mr. Vice Chancellor and Principal, I introduce you to Tob Tobias Suisse, who has compiled with the requirements for the, do the degree in Philosopher Doctor, with a thesis titled Population Demographics and Genetics of Two Populations of Social African Moret Subspecies, the Mahali Moret, Krypton Hottentotis Mahali, and the Haifa Moret, Krypton Hottentotis Pretoria, prepared under the supervision of Professor Nigel Bennett with myself as a co-supervisor. Uh, the candidate set out to investigate a vital evolutionary theory behind the causes and consequences of sociality in mammals, in particular African mole rats, namely that aridity drives social living. The candidate did so by comparing colony size, colony demographics, co um, uh, individual body mass, and the genetic exchange both between colonies and within colonies. As the theory predicts, the grassland species uh, per, Cause, allowed smaller colonies to form with larger body masses, while the arid species formed small, uh, larger colonies with smaller body masses. Dispers dispersal was higher in, those half, in the half of morats compared to the uh, Mahali morats. As such, climate change is likely to affect those smaller colony sizes as colony sizes predicts the ability to survive climate change. Uh, Mr. Vice Chancellor and Principal, I request you to confer the degree on the candidate. I uh, hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all its associated rights and privileges on the candidate. Congratulations. Mr. Vice Chancellor and Principal, I introduce to you Michelle Lee Thompson, who has complied with the requirements for the degree Philosophy Doctor, with a thesis titled, Can a Behavioral Index Be Used to Assess the Vulnerability of Arid Zone Birds to Climate Warming, prepared under my supervision and with Professor Susie Cunningham as co-supervisor. 
In this thesis, the candidate evaluated whether behavior patterns among birds inhabiting the Kalahari Desert can be used to assess how species vary in their vulnerability to rising temperatures. In particular, the candidate tested the hypothesis that uh, species commencing heat dissipation behaviors such as panting and shade seeking at lower air temperatures are more sensitive to extreme heat waves compared to species that display these responses only at higher air temperatures. The candidates' results reveal novel and in some cases unexpected relationships between behavioral and physiological responses to very hot weather. They contribute significantly to our understanding of the physiological underpinnings of avian behavior and provide important new insights into the likely impacts of rapid anthropogenic global heating on the, diversity, on the biodiversity of arid regions globally. Mr. Vice Chancellor and Principal, I request you to defer, refer, confer excuse me, the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy with its, all its associated rights and privileges on the candidate. Congratulations. Mr. Vice Chancellor and Principal, I introduce to you Anton Fenter, who has complied with the requirements for the degree Philosophia Doctor, with the thesis titled Characterization, Health Promoting Properties, and Food Applications of Anthocyanin Rich Pigments of Flowers from the Geraniaceae and Lamiaceae Plant Families, prepared under my supervision with Dr. Henny Fisher and Dr. Gary Stafford as co-supervisors. In his thesis, the candidate studied flower pigments of plants from the Geraniaceae and Lamiaceae families as potential natural food colorants. This is in response to rising consumer demand for natural food ingredients due to health concerns about synthetic colorants. Pigments from the two families contained different anthocyanins, flavonols, flavones, flavonones, phenolic acids, and hydrolyzable tannins. The Miesia pigments were more thermally and oxidatively stable than the Geraniaceae, possibly due to stabilizing interactions between anthocyanins and phenolic acids. The pigments showed antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, anti-obesity, and anti-diabetic properties and were successfully applied as natural colorants in low pH, sugar-based, and protein-based food systems. This study represents important innovations in natural food colorants and opens up new opportunities for application of such colorants in the food industry. Mr. Vice Chancellor and Principal, I request you to confer the degree on the candidates. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all its associated rights and privileges on the candidate. Congratulations. Mr. Vice Chancellor and Principal, the following candidates have complied with all the degree, all the requirements for the degree Master of Agriculture, Rural Development, Azola Mambi. <clears throat> Mr. Vice Chancellor and Principal, the following candidates have complied with all the requirements for the degree Master of Consumer Science, Clothing Management, Ruzan Khrobalar. <laughs> Food management, Taran Kotsia. <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. Vice Chancellor and Principal, the following candidates have complied with all the requirements for the degree Master of Science, Forest Science, Owen Peterson with distinction. <laughs> Medicinal Plant Science, Martin Mushomba. Nutrition, Nsepase Matete. Plant Pathology, Cheyenne Tron with distinction. Plant Science, Terran Armfield. Nompilo Mazibuko. Damien Vaz de Souza with distinction. Wildlife Management, Isma Kayisa. Zoology, Candice Lamb with distinction. Dominic Payne with distinction. Lorraine Shuttleworth. Caitlin van der Merwe. Okay. Kira Wallace with distinction. Mr. Vice Chancellor and Principal, the following candidates have complied with all the requirements for the degree Master of Science in Agriculture in Agricultural Economics, Kanimamba Lungwani. <laughs> Zosuliwe Kala. Annalisa Koshe. No. <laughs> Carl Crick with distinction. <laughs> Nozipo Puana. Mr. Vice Chancellor and Principal, the following candidates have complied with all the requirements for the degree Master of Science in Agriculture, in Animal Science, Animal Breeding and Genetics, Anna Kropf. <clears throat> Animal Nutrition, Pietrus Engelbrecht. Anatha Erasmus. <clears throat> Mr. 
Elsebie Schutte. Celestie Taljaard. Livestock Production, Simon Alderson Smith. Kaylee Marcus. Production Physiology and Product Quality, Sunay Bartman. <clears throat> Master of Science in Agriculture in Entomology, Tabang Moropa with distinction. Mr. Vice Chancellor and Principal, the following candidates have complied with all the requirements for the degree Master of Science in Agriculture, Horticulture, Three and Lee Croning. Hmphonishwa Zwane. Mr. Vice Chancellor and Principal, the following candidates have complied with all the requirements for the degree Bachelor of Agriculture Honours in Extension Lerato Lebakeng. <clears throat> Mantombi Mbongo. Shisla Mariso Nkwinika. <clears throat> Rural Development, Liabona Kwekwa. <clears throat> Lesohonolo Masha. Zawi Mbata. <clears throat> Tabu Modise. <clears throat> Zama Mtembu. Bachelor of Agriculture Science, Honours, Crop Science, Damien Levin with distinction. <clears throat> Mr. Vice-Chancellor and Principal, the following candidates have complied with all the requirements for the degree Bachelor of Science, Honours, Food Science, Judith Annan. Rutendo Bell. <clears throat> Yanei Bueta with distinction. <clears throat> Olivia Buck with distinction.
Kelly Cross. Jessica Dax with distinction. Margarita De Nation. Angelique Haig. Talana Mare with distinction. Clara McCauley. Harmony and Chabaling. Mika Schmidt. Michaela Skinner with distinction. Carla van Walbeek. Griselda Visser. Medicinal Plant Science, Willem Bosov. Helena Zelle. Plant Science, Yanga Katiwe. Sarista de Mulenare with distinction and the Margarita Mace Medal for the best BSc Honours student with an average of at least 70% and whose essay is based on an aspect of plant physiology. <laughs> Amokhelang Mulamu. Abhishag Pasha. <laughs> Jessica Prasher. <laughs> Isabella Seltzer with distinction. Imke Smith with distinction and the Schweikert Medal for Plant Science for the best BSc Honours student who obtained an average of at least 70% and whose essay is based on an aspect of plant science other than plant physiology. <laughs> soil Science, Environmental Soil Science, Prosper Shibanda with distinction. Wildlife Management, Elna Darfel. <laughs> Alana Grobler. <laughs> yes. 
Hamlet Masejo. Carla Mieni. Rodney Naleba. Robin Nelson. Aleta Stienkamp. Tinika Tiribeni. Arnu van Niekerk. Zoology, Sherelle Braunstein. Giselle Cumming. Christian de Wit Marais. Cleo Ferreira with distinction. Mila Geldenhuis with distinction and the Zoological Society of Southern Africa Prize for the best student in the degree BSc Honours Zoology. Megan Hudson with distinction. Jacqueline McTamney with distinction. Stuart Nilon. Laila van Seil with distinction. Dene Fisser. Juanita Vesels. Mr. Vice Chancellor and Principal, the following candidates have complied with all the requirements for the degree Bachelor of Consumer Science, Clothing, Retail Management, Charlotte Ellen. Shanae Bardenost. <clears throat> Nilia Bluchnout. <clears throat> Nadia Buitendag. Phoebe Darby Wade. Masechaba Dube. Aiden Grelen.
Taigen Han. Jenei Janse van Vuren. Jeannie Kratz. Nina Lienstra. Boy Tumelo Monchosi. Fadzai Piri. Robin Rowe. Daniel Sadler. Elske Sauermann. Erin Schmidt. Desmond Schwer with distinction. Mullen Sieger. Christine Sinclair. Dominique Strijdom. Catlejo Tsotsetsi. Marisa van der Westhuizen. Linky van Rooyen. Janeske van Staden. Food Retail Management, Hesti Bester. <clears throat> Catherine Brunk. <clears throat> Nien Kutzer. Natasha Goff Palmer. <clears throat> Julia Jarvel with distinction. <clears throat> Catlejo Cole. Pumelele Kumalo. Applaus 
Celesti Weiss. Hospitality Management, Lakshana Arnachelen. Urika Detmar. Angel Ekata. Abigail Jacob. Danae Kirsten. Chekhovatso Kutumela. Runyararo Mere. Chepiso Moloi. Pamela Moyo. Larika Potgieter. Andries van der Linde. Rachel van Seil. Mr. Vice Chancellor and Principal, the following candidates have complied with all the requirements for the degree Bachelor of Science. Jenny de Jager. Muiletsi Mantwe. Brent Stevens. Ecology, Arnie Leroux. Christian Stienekamp. In entomology, Ramokone Setosa. Entomology, Drake Slabbert. Food Science, Alicia Davids. Tamsin Di Castro with distinction. Inga de Toy. Shantai Governor. Yijin Z with distinction.
Celeste Jordan. Elsje Kruur. Rachel Lloyd with distinction. Keketso Mabaleka. Karina Maber. Luyanda Marikizela. Solo Maleka. Wonder Manana. Tlantla Mbata. Atle Hang Motswining. Vutali Nechikudini. Ntokozo and Tandane Sonto Poloana Ntokomalo Similani. Lizari Sneiman with distinction. Andrei Fenter. Medical Sciences, Chanel Klute with distinction. Alec Duplessis. Chante Governor. Courtney Hill with distinction. Chepang Lefete. Sibongile Mabena. Nkobile Mabusela. Dear Gracious McKay, <laughs> Jessica Markgraf, <laughs> Ruth 
Wandi Sile Masumbuka. Bongiswa Mlanga. Kolofelo Modika. Nicole Moodley. Zarin Musa. Marily Mostert with distinction. Oratile Motloba. Bongeka Mshengu. Lerato Mtombeni. Ishreen Naidu. Torisho Ndunduma. Lesejo Ndima. Dinile Ngobo. Alexander Prokos. Caroline Ramalepe. Anya Smuts with distinction. Cameron Subramuni. Tando Tabete. Angela Villacasi. Tiffany Kraus. Plant Science, Sefer de Zutte. Tashrik Murat. Bernice Small. Kaylee Fenter. In zoology, Caitlin Atkinson. Carly Bezoidnout.
Kelsey Chomsa. Kirsten Hope. Zane Jacobs. Kelsey Hubert with distinction. Sinako Konke Kumalo. Jacqueline Creer. Chuma Mateza. Acacia McCarty. Princess Mutale. Bridget O'Connor with distinction and the Zoological Society of Southern Africa Prize for the best student in zoology at 300 level. Taylan Pinar. Sarah Rich with distinction and the Margarita Mace Memorial Prize for a female plant science student with the best average of at least 70% for three third year modules in plant science. <clears throat> Chantal Skuman. Arthur Simon. Joshua Smith. Leah Smith. Monique van Bers. Laureen van Dijk. Yolandi van Dijk. Kylie van Meer. Michaela Fenter. Amber Vogel. Jochen Voges. Sinead Watchorn. Sean Willoughby. Ryan Wood. Mr. Vice Chancellor and Principal, the following candidates have complied with all the requirements for the degree Bachelor of Science in Agriculture, in Agricultural Economics and Agribusiness Management. William Carson. <clears throat> Mr.
Aisha Dollar. Sibongile Dlamini. Lloyd Foster. Benjamin Gardner with distinction. Well done. Mario Gierke. Nicole Gilau with distinction. Maria Grobler. Jason Jordan. Pierre Kruyer. Daniel Lutringen with distinction. Itumeleng Mabua. Juanita Mawai. Hanku Mare with distinction and the AEASA Prize for the best undergraduate student in agricultural economics, BSc Agric or BCom, who achieved an average mark of at least 70% in the agricultural economics module throughout the years of study. Cabello Matekha. Lawrence Matheson. <laughs> Ketiwe Nguni. <laughs> Murafi Moloto. Tandiwe Nkanta. Nelson Ntala. Moipone Pokane. Vusimuzi Sitole. Andris Stone. Ahmed Suleiman with distinction. <laughs> Joshua Van Seil. <laughs> Ahmed 
Arnold Fainter with distinction. Dian Fainter. Mr. Vice Chancellor and Principal, the following candidates have complied with all the requirements for the degree Bachelor of Science in Agriculture in Animal Science. Jennifer Adams. Annelise Marie Alberts. Sydney Atkins. Tian Bezaidnout. Jan Bluchnau. Kirsten Chambers. Kyle Kutsia. Shantai Konradi. Andries Kronier. Zandri Dasera. Joshua de Kok. Werner Diedrichs. Anneri de Toy. Tony Ferreira. Micah Forsyth. Alzan Furi. Jamie Furi. Joanna Hous. Marlies Grobbelaar. <applaus> Hannah Gross. <applaus> Corlin Hartman. Zanei Hausler. <laughs> Maria Hasselman, also the JJ Fienstra floating trophy for the animal science student who displayed the most zeal in both the theoretical and the practical training of the degree. Megan Hilton with distinction, also the SASAS Prize for the best student in animal science. <laughs> Anneli Hubert. <laughs> Ruth 
Mankoba Kumalo. Kaylee Koch. Christian Kunig. Crystal Lee Langer. Clive Machete. Jenna Murray. Senna Miller in Grube. Nicole Nell. Philip Nell. Dunay Westhuizen. Philip Pretorius. Julia Patik. Shannon Rose. Franco Sadi. Sanya Scarp. Kira Sieber with distinction. Duan Stein. Skalk van der Merwe. Cassandra van Deventer. Theodorus van Rooyen. Saskia van Vreden. Zet Versluis. Mr. Vice Chancellor and Principal, the following candidates have complied with all the requirements for the degree Bachelor of Science in Agriculture in Applied Plant and Soil Sciences. Arendt Brink. Quanele Dlamini. Gideon Duplessis with distinction and the South African Society for Crop Protection Medal for the best BSc Agri student in crop production and the Omnia Fertilizer Award for the best final year student in plant production and soil science. Charnay Janse van Rensburg. <laughs> 
Stefanus Janse van Rensburg. Chanel Kotze with distinction. <laughs> Mart Marie Kotsier with distinction and the South African Society for Crop Production Medal for the best BSc Agri student in crop production. <laughs> Dietrich Kuschke. Sipesitle Maseko. Frederick Potgieter. Leanne Starker. Samantha Travas with distinction. <laughs> Mr. Vice Chancellor and Principal, the following candidates have complied with all the requirements for the degree Bachelor of Science in Agriculture in Plant Pathology. Inga Kutsia with distinction. Alicia Heinz. Sibongile Gianni. Mapiri Pasha. Larissa Prinsloor. <laughs> Carl Schulenberg with distinction and the Bayer Crop Science Prize for the base student in plant pathology and the final year for the degree BSc or BSc Agric. Mr. Vice Chancellor and Principal, the following candidates have complied with all the requirements for the degree Bachelor of Science in Food Management, Culinary Science, Jenna Matthews. Sengiwe <laughs> Mindu. Leila Schultz. Nutrition, Janke Boetes. Karen Brady. Julia Damilano, with distinction. Kusula Makamu. <laughs> Palesa Muhale. Ramo Hotlo Moswane. Sabrina Stein with distinction. Yeah. 
Alessia Taverna. Melanie von Albach. And I would now like to ask our graduates to applaud their families, friends, and partners or spouses for their support over the years. We have now come to the end of the proceeding. Before we close, but I'm not really sure about this, I'm normally sure but because of the rain outside, I will still say I wish to invite all present for refreshments afterwards in the marquees where there isn't too much rain situated in the front of the Rembrandt Hall. You are now requested to stand for the singing of the national anthem and to remain standing until the assembly has been dissolved and the academic procession has left the auditorium. The words of the national anthem are printed on the inside back cover of the program. I was supposed to say, please rise, but you rose faster than I could say it. <laughs> dissolve this assembly of the University of Pretoria. <laughs>